For some unknown reason, following police vehicle pursuits, the suspects rarely make it to jail without suffering violent injuries. They always tend to resist or to get accidentally injured in some way. I'm about to show you brand new footage showing my client, Hiram Tolliver, being taken into custody by the Bluefield, West Virginia police after leading them on a brief chase. It's not all that clear why he was fleeing or why they were chasing him. Other than the allegations of hearing screeching tires, he wasn't suspected of committing any prior crime. On May 5th of 2022, Bluefield Police Department Officer D.R. Barker was assisting the city manager at an intersection in Bluefield. He claims that he heard a vehicle traveling at a high rate of speed. He claims he heard the screeching of tires, quote, where the vehicle was taking turns too fast. Once the vehicle came into view, he pulled in behind it, tried to stop it, but the driver fled. According to police reports, the pursuit began at 9.29 p.m. Body cam footage showed that the pursuit ended around 9.36 p.m., so roughly five or six minutes, at which time the driver, Hiram Tolliver, was violently taken into custody on the dead-end street in front of his parents' home. By around 9.48 p.m., Mr. Tolliver would end up falling off the roof of the local fire department building. That's right, this story doesn't end with the arrest itself, unfortunately. So here's the first portion of this never-before-seen body cam footage showing Hiram being taken into custody following this pursuit. Now, for some unknown reason, the first Bluefield police officer to reach Hiram to take him into custody um, did not film or did not preserve any body cam footage. So we have a limited view of what Officer Barker's camera observed that night. Now, why did the person with the first and the best view have no footage? We're left with speculation. Here it is in full speed, then I'll break it down and look for some clues about whether the police acted reasonably in taking Hiram into custody or whether he was perhaps beaten unnecessarily in retaliation for fleeing the traffic stop. Does what we saw in the video line up with the police reports? Officer Barker wrote the following. The vehicle then came to a stop at the dead end. The driver was then ordered out of the vehicle and to get on the ground. The driver went to the ground. When he was ordered to give us his hands, he resisted arrest. Detective K.L. Ross could not bring his hands together to effect the arrest. Defensive tactics were used to apprehend the suspect in order to effect the arrest. I was finally able to cuff the driver of the fleeing vehicle. Unfortunately, we have no report from the first officer to make physical contact with Hiram, Detective Ross. Let's slow things down a little bit and work with what we have. Does the video evidence support the allegation that Hiram was resisting? Here you see that Hiram is on his stomach, doesn't appear to be resisting. You can see both of his hands. If you look at the freeze frames, you see both of his legs. Doesn't appear to be resisting. Now you see what appears to be a strike to Hiram's head. Let's look in slow motion. And right here, it sounds like and looks like there's another strike. His hands appear to be under control. His legs appear to be under control. Not sure what the big problem is. And it looks to me like you're about to see another strike. Shut up, Harold. Shut up! 
Shut up! Go in the house. You got your ass back. And take a look at his knuckles. Back in the fucking house, you're gonna die! Get out of your ass back in the house, you're gonna die! Go in the fucking house! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, Yeah, blood on my leg. Mark, did you lose Mac out? No. Mac? Yeah. yeah. Green. Oh, you, you got a simple job today. Well, he came around me and the mayor here. We're on tires. Yeah, you got the mayor you're hanging with the, out with the city manager. The city manager. Anyways, who's got it? This is my car. I was like, cut you off because I could get him. That's why I cut in front of you like that. Marker, I thought you were I did, dude. He came around meeting the city manager squealing tires. So I was like, I'm going to go ahead and pull him over. And he just, he just took off. Oh, that's how he's riding. No, 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 no. They've got their own vehicle. That's I'm still rolling, by the way. Yeah. They what? So I'm still rolling, by the way. I guess. What'd you do that on the ground? Uh, mm -hmm. I got a tow truck coming. I'll deal with that. I guess some shit to wrap, but I got my own thing. I'm clean its hands off, Elgin. I hope. We ain't wrestling just the other day. Yeah. He was on jail the other day. That's a man. That's a man. Y'all you right. got a record route? Yeah. yeah. You, 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 you get him out of here, I'll do it. I can't until everybody yeah, else backs up. Move. I'm in the back. Who's in the very back? Hey. We'll put him in your car. And just take him to the station and start processing. I, I still have to finish processing. Well, we'll get him. Come on, Hiram. Come on. You're going to the back What's door. his name? Hey, you get, I got some shit in my car. Let's go. Go with that one. Let's well, go. Let's go. Let's go. go. Let's go. It don't, you know what? It really don't fucking matter. You know how many people you've been fucking to? Being fucking stupid. Fuck the fuck stupid. You've been fucking to? Being fucking stupid. Yeah, man. So just shut the, fuck, shut the fuck up. That's, that's what you can do. You like to go fucking this, down there. This time you're gonna stay in there, Sergeant, bud. You know how many fucking people down there you got killed? <laughs> nah, no, no, the fuck you don't. I don't think you do. Officer Barker didn't elaborate on what he meant by defensive tactics being used on Hiram. There were multiple eyewitnesses we may, may hear from later, but what does the video show? Injuries are an important 
uh, piece of evidence in use of force cases, as they can help establish the level of force, the type of force used. There were several glimpses of Hiram's face following his arrest in the footage. You saw how one side of his face appeared to be bloody, and the other didn't. This matches up with subsequent photos from the hospital. You also saw how Detective Ross took Hiram from the first police cruiser all the way back to the last police cruiser, with Hiram limping in obvious pain. Instead of providing or making available medical treatment for his arrestee, Detective Ross instead lectures Hiram, essentially telling him to suffer because of what he had done, endangering police officers during the pursuit. Justifiable force must be reasonable in light of the circumstances. Courts don't generally second-guess a police officer making split-second decisions in 2020 hindsight in a struggle with someone who's physically resisting or fighting with them, especially if that person is known to be dangerous or they did something really bad. But if the facts show that the arrestee has submitted to them, is not resisting, and that the force that is applied is applied unnecessarily, like as punishment or retaliation, rather than in an attempt to gain control or custody of the person, that's always going to be unreasonable in the eyes of the courts. Given everything that just happened, as well as the officer's allegations that Hiram had almost killed several police officers and resisted arrest to the extent of requiring defensive tactics, they wouldn't unhandcuff him to walk him, let him walk inside the uh, police department for processing, would they? Well, apparently they did, and according to them, Hiram made a run for it just as they were entering the police department door. He jumped over a guardrail and onto the roof of the fire department running across the roof and jumping off or falling off the roof of the fire department onto the asphalt 16 feet below. Here's the footage that we have of the aftermath. Concrete's not your friend, is it? God damn, it's broke, y'all. Well, that's all it is. 15 to uh, 15 to 20. So yeah, 15 to 20. Uh, my I my wrist is it is, buddy. Where else are you hurting, honey? My wrist. Just your wrist? Have you done any drugs this evening? Here, I'm not in trouble for doing drugs, but obviously you've taken yeah, like, something. I just want, like, I need to know because this drugs, is to help you. The drugs can, listen, the drugs can alter how you're feeling, and the way that you feel, the height that you feel, you could be dead and you could be pretty bad. And I want to make sure that you get the help that you need. You got it? So you need to be honest with us. That's, that's Did you hit your head? Did you hit your head on here? What do you say? How old are you? Taped out pretty good. We can tape it. off of you. What's your date of birth? I hope I didn't lose my phone again. You're my head. How'd you get? What is it? 95. 95. What else is it? Hey, don't don't move your damn arms. I ain't gonna move. If you move your arms, Can it's I gonna get worse. What? This stuff, my left hand, I think it's right. It looks like you do We're gonna take them off. But listen, you need to just chill out. Do you understand me? Yes, I ain't gonna move. Do not move. I promise. It's one thing to deal with these guys, but now you're dealing with me, and I'm on a whole different level here. Do you got that? Yes, ma'am. Now, tell me your date of birth. I think February 6, 1995. Right there where they did handcuff Are you at allergic to anything? See how it goes no, the Do you take any kind of medication? Uh, no, I smoke weed every night again. And you have not had any drugs today? No. And I think the wrist is broke. It is broke, I can tell. I mean, I don't care to sit with it. I'll sit with it. What? For blue for Princeton. Princeton. It's obviously broke. Oh, yeah. It's obviously broke, but what I'm concerned about is the height. For Princeton, honestly. Well, I'm even thinking 
trauma and I, I I think we need to like flip him over and look at look okay. at him before we can That's make fine. that decision. Well, give me a, uh, you want to throw the backboard here? here? Oh, you know what I mean. Sorry. Flip over like this. There you go. So what was he um, in custody for? He ran from the yeah, high speed pursuit. I mean, he was like right. a car pursuit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like. These days, bringing them in up here. Hey, Bob, he took jumped. off across the room. <laughs> we ran him in the door, jumped the rail, ran off the building, and jumped off the building. Suck. So, he's probably already, I think he said his leg so, might have already been a little hurt from the wreck no. whenever so he, he runs. Yeah, he wrecked. Uh, he didn't wreck out, no. Oh, no, he didn't. Listen, I, I don't it's know gonna if he hurt. wrecked out or not. Like a no, he didn't wreck out. Oh. Okay. Hiram was airlifted to Charleston Area Medical Center and underwent extensive surgery, treatment, and rehabilitation. Why would Hiram have tried to get away? Perhaps he was scared. You could hear that during his arrest when it sounded like he was being struck by the officers. He was crying out to his parents, who were eyewitnesses, that he was in fear for his life. If he was really trying to flee, why would he pull onto his parents' dead-end street and stop in front of his parents' home? Perhaps he was scared, for some reason, that the police were going to hurt him. Perhaps he thought that there would be safety there in the form of witnesses. It's not all that far-fetched that the fire department roof jump resulted because Hiram thought that he would be killed or hurt inside that police department and ran for his life. The officer who was present for the fire department jump wrote in his report that the first thing he did when he reached Hiram injured on the asphalt was to handcuff him. Indeed, those handcuffs can be seen in the body cam footage of the aftermath, despite what appears or sounds like is a compound fracture of his arm or wrist. There didn't appear to be much concern by the Bluefield Police Department about the constitutional responsibilities, the obligations placed on the government when it takes a citizen into custody. Government officials have a duty to provide medical treatment, medical care to their arrestees, to people in their custody. They have a duty to ensure the safety of those individuals. Now, there may be multiple constitutional issues arising out of this incident. My investigation will continue, but I'm curious to see what you think, what the hive mind thinks. I always learn new things that I didn't catch, that I didn't even think about when I read viewers' comments. So please uh, feel free to leave your insight. Now, also make sure to subscribe to follow along, both here and at thecivilrightslawyer.com for updates on what happens next in this case and in other cases.